Good evening, booktube, YouTube, mankind, humanity. Uh, I thought I'd make a video. It is a Friday here in West Michigan. It is 6.42 at night. It is July the 17th, 2020. Yeah, I'm here by myself this evening because uh, my wife is down the street babysitting our oldest son's two daughters because it's J Caleb and Emily's 11th wedding anniversary tonight, today. So my wife is babysitting so they could go out for dinner and celebrate 20, 11 years of being married. And I thought, well, since my wife is gone, I got the dining room table. I like making videos here in the dining room because I can put my books out and my diary and drink my glass of wine. And uh, yeah, so I hope you're all doing well. You had a good week. Now, when I talk about Friday reads, this is what I read on today, Friday. Uh, and probably uh, I have been reading what I'll be showing you in this video. I'll be reading throughout the weekend and I've read this week. First of all, uh, what have I been reading <laughs> on this Friday? Well, as you all know, I mentioned in my last video that there are a couple guys who are going to read to Calvin's Institute's of Christian religion. It's a uh, full title is uh, Calvin Institutes of the Christian Religion in Two Volumes, edited by John T. McNeil, translated and indexed by Ford Lewis Battles. Now, th this is a two volume work, and this is the one I recommend. Don't get an abridged, don't get a one volume paperback. This is the one to get if you're going to read uh, Institutes of Christian Religion by John Calvin. Uh, this is the new and definitive English language edition and one of the monumental works of the Christian Church. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so this is the one I, I had to have for a textbook when I was in Bible College. I went to Reform Bible College, which is now called Kuiper College in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And then I went to Reform Theological Seminary in Jackson, Mississippi, which is still Reform Theological Seminary. So this is the one I recommend. And the reading schedule is that I'm supposed to read book, book one, uh, section one and chapters one through five. And what that section is on is on the knowledge of God, the creator. What it, the knowledge of God, the creator, book, book one. And then you have chapter one, the knowledge of God, that of ourselves are connected, how they are inter, interrelated. And then you have chapter two, what is it to know God and to what purpose the knowledge of him tends. And then you have chapter 3, the knowledge of God has been naturally implanted in the minds of men. It says in the first sentence of chapter 3, there is within the human mind, indeed by natural instinct, an awareness of divinity. This we take beyond controversy. Then you have chapter 4. This knowledge is either smothered or corrupted, partly by ignorance and partly by malice. And then the last chapter I was supposed to read, chapter 5. The knowledge of God shines forth in the fashioning of the universe and the continuing government of it. The first sentence, the final goal of the blessed life, more of a rest in the knowledge of God lest anyone then be excluded from excess to happiness, he not only sowed in men's minds that body, one, wait a minute, yeah. 
he not only sowed in men's minds that seed of religion of which we have spoken, but revealed himself and daily discloses himself in the whole workmanship of the universe. As a consequence, men cannot open their eyes without being compelled to see God, to see him. Indeed, his essence is incomprehensible. Hence, his, divinity, his divineness far escapes all human perception. But upon his individual works, he has engraved unspeakable marks of his glory, so clear and so prominent that even unlettered and stupid folk cannot plead the excuse of ignorance. Therefore, the prophet aptly exclaims that he is, quote, clad with light as with a garment, Psalm 104, verses, verse 2. It is, uh, it is as if he said, Therefore the Lord began to show himself in the visible splendor of his apparel. Ever since the creation of the universe, he brought forth those insignia whereby he shows his glory to us whenever and wherever we cast our gaze. Likewise, the same prophet skillfully compares the heavens as they are stretched out to his royal tent and says that he has laid the beams of his chambers on the, on the waters and has made the clouds his chariot and rides on the wings of, of the wind and that the winds and lightning bolts are his swift messengers. <coughs> and since the glory of his power and wisdom shine more brightly above, heaven is often called his palace. Yet in the same, in the first place, wherever you you cast your eyes, there is no spot in the universe where you can, wherein you cannot discern at at least some sparks of his glory. So Calvin is saying that that in the in the in creation that we see uh, some sparks of his glory. You cannot, in one glance, survey this vast and beautiful system of the universe in its wide expanse without being completely overwhelmed by the boundless force of its brightness. The reason why the author of the letter to the Hebrews elegantly out is the word elegantly elegantly calls the universe the appearance of things invisible is that this skillful ordering of the universe is for us a sort of mirror in which we can contemplate God, who is otherwise invisible. The reason why the prophet attributes to the heavenly creatures a language known to every nation is that therein lies the assertion of divinity so apparent that it ought not to escape the gaze of even the most stupid tribe. The apostle declares this more clearly. What men need to know concerning God has been disclosed to them. For one in all gaze upon the invisible nature known from the creation of the world, even is eternal power and divinity. Romans chapter 1, verses 19 through 20. So yeah, section 2, the divine wisdom displayed in all that we see. And then, that's chapter 5. And, and then tomorrow morning, I will start reading which is chapter 6. Scripture is needed as guide and teacher for anyone who would come to know God the Creator. So you can't know God solely by the, his, what He's revealed Himself in creation. We need, we need the Scripture. That is special revelation. That's where God reveals Himself as our Redeemer, as our Savior. So, uh, so I was reading that today, and then I also been reading this along with Calvin's Institute of Christian Religion, the, a theological guide to Calvin's Institute's essays and analysis, edited by w, David W. Hall and Peter A. Lembeck. So this is a good book to have. Another good book. I mean, I have a lot of books on Calvin, but. These are I've been looking at this last couple of days. This is the Calvin Handbook, edited by Herman uh, Zalderheis. So, now 
I noticed uh, today when I was looking at the Calvin Institutes of Christian Religion, this is a series called Lit Library of Christian Classics. And I remembered uh, when I was in seminary and Bible college, I had to buy s some more of the Library of Christian Classics for, for classes. And I thought I'd just show those to you. You can buy these. Uh, this one is uh, Calvin's Theological Treatises, editor J.K.S. Reed. And then you have the Library of Christian Classics, uh, Zingli and Bollinger. They were reformers at the time of the Reformation. This is edited by G.W. Bromley. And then uh, you have Melanchthon and Busser, the Library of Christian Classics. These were all reformers. Uh, Switzerland, Germany, France. And then you have the medieval period, Scholastic, Miscellany, As Anselm, Aza, Anselm, and Akam. Uh, so you have him. And then you have late medieval mysticism in the Library of Christian Classics. Here you have like Bonaventure, the journey of of the mind to God, uh, Richard, Richard, uh, oh, I have his works at home, I have uh, Richard of St. Victor, the, uh, then you have Hugh of, uh, let me see here, you have Bernard Clavaux, the, uh, you have Richard of St. Victor, you have Francis of Assisi, you have Bonaventure, Miser Eckerd, Catherine of Seneca, uh, Rotobrick, Nicholas of Cusa, Catherine of Geneva. Uh, uh, so yeah, it's a good little introduction to light medieval mysticism. This is edited by Ray C. Petri. Then you get into the early church of Western asceticism by Owen Chadwick. Uh, the Sayings of the Desert Fathers is in here. Conference of John Cassian. Then you have Alexander of Christian Alexandrian Christianity. You have the writings of Origen, uh, Clement of Alexandria. Uh, the origin in here and then the, I don't have all of these but this is the last one I have early Latin theology Ambrose Cyprian Jerome so these are good things now the reason why these are good to have if you're reading church history for example and you come across these men and you, they mention in church history, their writings. And for example, I was, this is a good church history book, The Path of Christianity, The First Thousand Years by John Anthony McCarty. Now you read this, and like for example, I was reading uh, today on Origen. And so you, he mentions Origen, and then you can look at one of these, and Alexander and Christianity, and they have in here a sample of Origen's writings. His Origen on Prayer, uh, Origen Exhortation of Martyrdom, and then you have things like that. So then you can, it mentions Origen in, in here about his life and his ministry and his writings, and then you have, you can pick one of these up, these Library of Christian Classics, and you can read a sample of their writings. And that's why they're really valuable. And I don't have all of them in this series. I just have the ones I probably had to have when I was in Bible college or seminary. So I don't have all of them. I don't have the ones on St. Augustine. I don't have the ones on Thomas Aquinas. 
uh, oh, I don't have a lot of them, but I have uh, a few. Like you're reading on the Reformation. You read about Zingli and Bullinger, and you read about Melanchthon and Booster. And of course, you read about Calvin, and then you can look at their writings. And the reason why I got this one out today to read on the uh, his Catechism of the Church of Geneva. And, you know, I don't have a co I think I might have another copy downstairs, but this is a good thing to have if you're reading on the life of John Calvin. Another thing is, uh, this is Melanchthon on Christian Doctrine. I found that in, <laughs> next to these other books. I just thought I'd show them to you. Uh, this is his Logi, which was pu published in 1555. If you want to know uh, about Reformation theology, uh, church, ecclesiology, uh, baptism of children in here, uh, of the gospel, the divine law, human strength and free will, on the trinity of the three persons of the Godhead and things like that. So these are the kind of books that I have on a Friday. <laughs> what I have been reading throughout the day and what I've been looking at and writing in my diary. Today I ended on a page for July 2020. I ended today for the year 2020. I'm on page 676 for the year 2020. Tomorrow is a Saturday. It'll be the 18th of July. We're supposed to get, we're having hot weather here in West Michigan. So we have the house closed up and the air conditioner blowing. So I'm writing in my diary. Tomorrow is July the 18th, 2020. Reading Calvin in the morning. And I also got this book in the mail. I've been reading on Samuel Johnson. There are people in Booktube who are reading through James Boswell's Life of Samuel Johnson, and I've been reading several books about Samuel Johnson and James Boswell and the making of James Boswell writing the life of Samuel Johnson. I have read biographies of Samuel Johnson. I've read all kinds of books on 18th century uh, English literature. I got this yesterday. This is another one I wanted for my to read. This is by Richard ha Richard Holmes, Mr. Johnson, and Mr. Savage. Uh, one of the writings of Samuel Johnson, he wrote The Life of Richard Savage, and this is about their friendship and him writing that little biography of the poet, English poet Richard Savage. So I've been reading this when I'm not reading my, uh, my Christian books. I'll probably read this tonight. So that's it. That's my Friday reads. Uh, I, I did go to thrift stores today. I got found two books, but really nothing really exciting. Uh, so I just thought I'd stop by and share what I've been reading today. And check out these uh, Library of Christian Classics if you're really into original documents, if you're really into reading Christian uh, the history of uh, church history, history of Christianity. These are good. These are good resources to have. Uh, and also, you know, I it's you know read read Calvin's Institutes. Uh, today I was reading it and it was just real. I was just getting blessed. You know, hearing the clear teachings of the gospel and the teachings of Scripture and. Uh, I was just really blessed and uh, so yeah you know people can you know you read you can read St. Thomas Aquinas the Summa you can read you know like John John Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress you can read the Church Fathers you can read I read St. John of the Cross The Dark Knight and the Institutes of Christian Religion is a classic in itself uh, Calvinism has had a profound effect on Western civilization and upon even American, uh, American evangelicalism and Christianity. 
So I hope you had a good week. I hope you're having a good Friday, that you have a good weekend. Thank you for the comments. Do pray that you're not sick due to this plague. And until next time, bye.